all of us are familiar with the von Williams classification which was published in 1975. It had four groups. One is a class 1 consisting of sodium channel blockers again subdivided into A, B and C. Class 2 consisting of beta blockers. Class 3 of potassium channel blockers and class 4 calcium channel blockers. The updated classification was published in 2018, the centenary year of birth anniversary of Vaughan Williams. It had several new classes as well as modification of old classes. Class 0 was the HCN channel blockers including Iva Bradin. Class 1, A, B and C were left alone. A new class, Class 1, D was introduced for the group including rhinolysin, which are late sodium current blockers. Class 2 has been renamed as autonomic inhibitors and activators. Class 2A includes non-selective beta inhibitors like carbidilol, propranolol and selective beta-1 inhibitors like metoprolol. Class 2b is non-selective beta activator with the prototype is isoproteranol. Class 2c includes muscarinic M2 inhibitors like atropine, hyosin and scopolamine. Class 2d is muscarinic M2 activator which includes pilocarpin and digoxin. Class 2E includes adenosine 1 activators like adenosine and ATP. Class 3 has been renamed as voltage dependent potassium channel openers and blockers. Class 3A includes non-selective potassium channel blocker amiodron and dronidron as well as HERG blocker dofitlite, ibutlite and sotalol. Class 3A also includes the ultra rapid potassium current blocker vernaclan and transient outward current blocker tridisamyl which is under regulatory review. Next is class 3b includes nicorandal and pinacetyl which are potassium ATP channel openers. Class 3c potassium acetylcholine blocker there is only one drug under regulatory review. The class 4 has been renamed as calcium handling modulators. Of these class 4a are the surface membrane calcium channel blockers. Of these non-selective ones are Bepridil, L-type calcium channel blockers are Veripamil and Diltiasm and we are yet to have an approved T-type calcium channel blocker. Class 4B are the intracellular calcium channel blockers. The reanodine blockers are Flecanade and Propafenone. You may note that this overlaps with class 1C. There are no clinically approved drugs in IP3R calcium channel blocker group. Class 4C sarcoplasmic reticular calcium ATPase activator. No approved drugs in this group as well as in class 4D and class 4E. Class 5 are the mechanosensitive calcium channel blockers. There is an investigational drug in this group. Class 6 are the gap junction channel blockers, the connexin blockers. One investigational drug is carbinoxalon. Class 7 is interesting because they are not actually antiarrhythmic drugs. They are upstream target modulators like ACE inhibitors, ARBs, omega-3 fatty acids, and statins. So this group of classification you can see there are several classes in which there is no drug 
in clinical use at the moment. Maybe it's a futuristic classification. It is possible to cut down the number of groups by avoiding the groups without any drug at the moment so that the classification may be simplified further. Thank you. Ivapradin is a class 0 drug and it's a channel blocker. It inhibits the funny current otherwise known as IF current responsible for diastolic depolarization of sinus node. It is used in heart failure and left ventricular dysfunction based on shift and beautiful trials. It is also useful in inappropriate sinus tachycardia. You have to discontinue Avabradin if atrial fibrillation develops. Visual effects of Avabradin are known as phosphines and it is thought to be due to the inhibition of the IH retinal current. Mexilitin is a class 1B drug but has some class 1D properties as well. It has actions on sodium current as well as the late sodium current. It is useful in long QT syndrome 3. It shortens QTC and reduces life-threatening arrhythmias. In Timothy syndrome, otherwise known as long QT8, it shortens QT interval and abolishes 2 to 1 AV block. Mexilitin is metabolized in the liver and has a half-life of 10 to 14 hours. Oral dosage is eight hourly or twice daily. Mexilitin has been found to be useful in the treatment of ventricular tachycardia, ventricular premature complexes, and for the prevention of ventricular fibrillation. Flecainide is a class 1C drug. It reduces peak sodium current, Vmax, rapid and ultra rapid components of potassium current. It has been used in the treatment of atrial tachycardia, atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and axillary pathway mediated tachycardias. Ventricular tachyarrhythmias in the absence of structural heart disease is another indication for flecainate. Produces low conduction and reduced excitability, particularly at higher heart rates, known as use dependency. It also blocks reentrant pathways. Catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia can be treated with flecainate, but it is not the ideal drug. The ideal drug is beta blocker. Flecainate has been used in Brugada challenge when Ajmelin is not available. Ideally, it has to be given intravenously. Monomorphic ventricular tachycardia in patients with a myocardial scar and worsening of heart failure are two important disadvantages of flecainate. It is also an intracellular calcium channel blocker, the sarcoplasmic pyanodine receptor is blocked. In that way, it overlaps with class 4B. Propafenone is a class 1C drug. It targets the sodium current, rapid component and ultra rapid components of potassium currents, beta receptors and alpha receptors. It can prolong the PR interval, QRS duration as well as increase the defibrillation threshold. The drug has a half-life of 2 to 10 hours, mandating 8 hourly dosage. In the absence of structural heart disease, propafenone can be used for treatment of ventricular tachycardia and premature complexes. Like flecainate, it can also cause drug-induced Brigada syndrome and worsen heart failure as well as atrioventricular block. Just like flecainide, it also blocks the intracellular calcium channel sarcoplasmic ranodin receptor. Ranodazine is a class 1D antiarrhythmic agent as per the updated classification in 2018. It reduces the late sodium current INAL. Ranolacin has been initially recognized for the treatment of stable angina. Now, of late, it has been used in ventricular tachycardia because of its antiarrhythmic potential. But it is not the first-line drug for ventricular tachycardia. 
It produces a reduction in early after depolarization induced triggered activity. The drug has a half life of seven hours, hence twice daily dosage is needed even for an extended release preparation. Ranolazine produces light QT prolongation, but very unlikely to cause toss at the points. Only a single case report has been there, but in that case report there were other causes of TOSATs like um, the patient was on fluoxetine, had hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia due to diuretics. Overall, pranolazine has antiarrhythmic potential but cannot be used as intravenous preparation as yet. So it is useful only for a preventive aspect. Autonomic inhibitors and activators constitute the new class 2. Adenosine is an adenosine A1 receptor activator. Activation of A1 receptors in supraventricular tissue, including the sinoatrial node, atrial tissue, and AV nodal tissue. It activates G protein coupled inward rectifying potassium channels. It causes hyperpolarization of the sinoatrial node, shortens action potential durations in atrial and AV nodal tissues. Adenosine is useful in the termination of AV nodal tachycardia and cyclic AMP mediated triggered ventricular tachycardias. Reduction in early after depolarization and delayed after depolarization induced triggered activity is the mechanism of the use in triggered activity ventricular tachycardias. It is also useful in differentiation of sinus from atrial tachycardia. Word of caution is needed as adenosine is contraindicated in asthmatics. Amiodron is a class 3A antiarrhythmic agent as per the new classification. It blocks the voltage dependent potassium channels. It is a non selective potassium channel blocker. Interestingly, it has an important side effect due to iodine content, which is not there for the related drug dronidron. But dronidron has not been proved to be as effective as amiodron. Amiodron is useful in a wide range of atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. It prolongs the QT interval, but TOSATS is very rare. Probably it has multiple classes of action. It was originally introduced as an anti angina agent. It may be noted that hypotension, which often occurs with intravenous amiodron, is mainly due to excipients like polysorbate and benzyl alcohol and not exactly due to amiodron. Sotalol is also a voltage dependent potassium channel blocker. It blocks the IKR that is the rapid component of inward rectifier potassium current. In addition it has action on beta 1 and beta 2 receptors. Sotalol increases the refractory period with decreased re-entrant tendency. It is useful in ventricular tachycardia without structural heart disease or with only a remote myocardial infarction. Sotalol can be used in WPW syndrome with atrial fibrillation and for prevention of ventricular fibrillation and treatment of ventricular premature contractions. It has a half life of 12 hours and 12th hourly dosage is the schedule. Sotalol, being a class 3 drug, can prolong the QT interval. Ibutylide is another class 3A agent, voltage dependent potassium channel blocker acting on the IKR current. It increases refractiveness of myocytes AV node and his Purkinje system. Ibutylide is useful in the conversion of acute atrial fibrillation and flutter. A repeat dose may be given after 10 minutes if arrhythmia is not responding. But remember to stop the infusion when the arrhythmia resolves or ventricular tachycardia develops. Being class 3A drug, QT prolongation and risk of TOSATs is significant. It may be noted that magnesium increases the efficacy of ibutylide and also reduces the chance for QT prolongation and TOSAT. Vernacolant is another voltage dependent potassium channel blocker, but it acts on the ultra rapid potassium current, which is rather atrium specific. It increases action potential recovery time. 
increases refractory period and decreases re-entrant tendency. It is also used for immediate conversion of atrial fibrillation like ibutylite. It produces mild prolongation of QT interval. Now we will review a few antiarrhythmic trials. An important one was the SCD heft or the sudden cardiac death in heart failure trial in 2005 it was published. It was one of the landmark trials. 2500 odd patients in NYHA class 2 or 3 with ejection fraction less than 35% was randomized to either conventional therapy with placebo or conventional therapy plus amiodron or conventional therapy with single lead ICD which was programmed conservatively with shock only mechanism. And it was found that compared to placebo, amiodron had similar risk of death. That was amiodron was not superior to placebo. But single lead ICD, shock only ICD reduced overall mortality by 23%. Here we see that unlike the cast trial in which enkinade or flecknade was used where there was an excess mortality while amiodron was mortality neutral. 5A study was after atrial fibrillation ablation 110 patients were randomized to receive either antiarrhythmic drugs or no antiarrhythmic drugs. Those without left ventricular dysfunction or structural heart disease received propofenol or flecanate. Others received either sotelol or dofetilide. Patients wore a trans telephonic monitor for four weeks and were re evaluated at six weeks of treatment. The primary endpoint was a composite of atrial arrhythmias lasting more than 24 hours, atrial arrhythmias with severe symptoms requiring hospital admission, cardioversion or initiation or change of antiarrhythmic drug therapy. Intolerance to antiarrhythmic agent requiring drug cessation was another endpoint. It was found that antiarrhythmic treatment was well tolerated and reduces the primary endpoint of clinically significant atrial arrhythmia and need for cardioversion or admission. Being a short trial it was not directed at assessing mortality benefit. Another study of 3600 odd patients assessed antiarrhythmic therapy after catheter ablation of atrial fibrillation with a follow-up period of 6.7 plus minus 2.2 years. It was not a randomized study, it was a propensity score matching study with every two patients on antiarrhythmic drugs matched to one patient who was off antiarrhythmic drugs. There were 50 deaths in the antiarrhythmic group and 62 deaths in the no antiarrhythmic group. Risk of death was not significant on multivariate analysis. But there was a trend towards mortality benefit with antiarrhythmic drugs with a hazard ratio of 0.66. So the trial concluded that use of antiarrhythmic drugs after atrial fibrillation is not associated with an increased risk of mortality. The new modernized classification of antiarrhythmic agents is quite extensive and includes several classes without any currently available drug. It can be shortened by removing the classes without any currently available drug. Amiodron was not found to be superior to placebo for long term use in the sudden cardiac death heart failure trial. Antiarrhythmic drugs can reduce clinically significant arrhythmia after ablation as per the 5A study, but again it was mortality neutral. Mexilitin is useful for treatment of long QT3 syndrome as well as Timothy syndrome. Ibutylide and vernaclant are useful for acute conversion of atrial flutter and fibrillation. Adenosine is useful for termination of supraventricular tachycardia. Amiodron, as all of us are routinely using, can be used for termination of atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. Thank you very much.